unemployment rate unch at 3.8 percent. Average hourly earnings went up only two tenths. Employment for August and July was also revised higher. Will all of this force the Fed to hike again in November? My next guest says no. Joining me now is Diane Swank. She's chief economist at KPMG. Our senior economics reporter Steve Leisman is here with us as well. Welcome to both of you. Diane, take it away. Well, I think this was a great jobs number, and I'm glad to be wrong this time. I think, Steve, if you did the calculation, <laughs> I got a D. So, you know, um, to get a D and get have the economy be much stronger, I'll take it after doing well on the jobs reports before and the revisions, finally reversing course on the upside. The important thing in this is, first of all, that 3.8 percent um, unemployment rate, it's not because we had more layoffs. We actually had fewer layoffs during the month. And, in fact, we're absorbing the new workers that are coming into the labor force. Uh, much of the increase in participation is this really quirky thing with teenagers that is hard to capture in August and, and September teachers. and that buoyed participation rate. That said, this is a great um, number overall. 95 percent of the job gains in two sectors that had been lagging, leisure and hospitality and in health care. That health care was very late to reach the previous peak. We finally we kept we captured the previous peak in restaurant hires and that matches up with new business formation has pivoted from online retailers coming out of the pandemic to now food services and construction those food services coming out of the urban areas going into suburban areas that's buoying overall employment so you're sort of seeing what should have been the hardest mile of the marathon for the fed has become a relay race where now you see sectors that were lagging including the government sector yeah. picking up. I thought that was quite striking. And Steve, I just want to, uh, several people have highlighted, uh, Bob Bassani highlighted this, Rick Reeder uh, as well was saying, listen, this is a report very much driven by non-cyclical parts of the economy, by education, by health care. And does that change kind of our conclusions about, you know, what's going on with the business cycle? I don't think so, Kelly. There were definitely some quirks in there and we saw those coming. Uh, Diane, I don't grade you. I, I grade myself poorly. I wish there was something I could go back and see. I miss this. I miss that, that there was some kind of indication of a strong number coming. I mean, I think the claims numbers spoke to an even type of jobs report, maybe one around 200,000. Uh, the home base uh, high frequency data was a bit stronger. That was something to pay attention to. The ADP certainly sent you the wrong way. So I'm going over my, uh, my yeah. I'm going over my work, too, so I'm not grading you on this. But I, I don't know, uh, Kelly, I do think that the revisions higher, if this were one strong out, outlying number and they hadn't gone, revised the prior two months higher, I'd say take this with a big grain of salt. I, of course, take any number with a grain of salt. But the idea that the three-month moving, three-month average of job growth, which we, at age 29 this morning, we thought was 150,000, and now it's something like 266,000, you have to think the economy is doing better than we thought. You have to think that... Uh, the yep. job market is not as soft as the Fed hoped it would be. And then after you, you say those things, you have to wonder how much concern is the Fed going to have that they're not getting the softening in the job market, in which case you say, well, OK, maybe they'll be satisfied with the idea that wages are not going up strongly. But I don't know that that's the case. I think they're still going to be sort of looking at that last rate hike of the year as still a real possibility, but watching what's happening with the 10-year to say, you know what, maybe we don't have to do it if the inflation numbers remain What would Diane, just remind me, what would the strike effect Bingo. be in, in all of this? UAW, I think we were waiting till the next one to really see that. And I just want to mention as well that yes. Kaiser healthcare worker strike looks like it may now broaden from three days possibly another 10 days as they move into the weekend. And so I, any impact from that yet? Um, not from the Kaiser strike yet, and the UAW strike will show up in the October report as long as it continues into next week. We did see the strike effects of the writers and SAG strike. That broadened, and that's also where some of the weakness in wages were. That Steve's a little bit, you know, are we, is that really something that's going to stick? I think he's right on that. But in the broader context, I think Steve's also right in this is where I don't think the Fed is going to do another rate hike because the bond market, as of yesterday, Mary Daly was saying, basically, we've got equivalent of another rate hike already in there from the bond market. And as long as the bond market stays buoyant, as uh, Rick thinks it's going to be, those bond yields will do a lot of the heavy lifting for the Fed. But that doesn't change the Fed's higher for even higher for longer. And, you know, the second half of the year, we're now taking rate hikes 
out, <clears throat> rate cuts out of next year, and we've delayed when the Fed is actually going to cut rates. And I think that is important because that's where the Fed's at right now. And that's what this data tells you. A stronger economy, even as inflation is cooling, they don't want to risk backtracking and losing ground.